Let me ask you this. What moves you? What moves you to be you? And what moves you to do you? We don't know. Well, when you find out what moves you, let me tell you, no obstacle can stand in your way. You still don't believe me? Well, let's have a little chat about it. Welcome to Experience the Groove to Improve Your Life channel. I'm your host, Joey L. Dowd. One, two, three, or four, five, six, or one, two, three, or four, five, six, AKA Dr. Dancer. And I want to thank you guys for watching all my videos, for your likes, subscribes, comments, and shares. Please keep them coming. Hey, you guys. I want to do something that I haven't done in a long time. I want to sit down and I want to talk to you or chat about what it takes to find. These are tips. What it takes to find what moves you and step into your own greatness because everybody has something great that they can do. And I want to first share two stories with you about me finding what moves me. I want to share two stories with you about finding what moved me and allowed me to be able to go further and step into my greatness. One story I want to share with you is when I first moved to California back in the early 2000s, uh, I was so excited to move to California to expand my business. I wasn't just starting out because I had done so well living in Orlando, Florida. And I had really been blessed to work with Universal Studios, Walt Disney World, SeaWorld, and uh, the transcontinental uh, establishment that created Backstreet Boys and uh, Insane and Take Five. So I was a part, original choreographer for Backstreet and Take Five, I was a part of the, that whole thing starting out in the late 90s, early 2000s. Well, actually in the late 90s, uh, before I moved to California in the 2000s, early 2000s. So let me share a story with you. When I moved to California in the early 2000s, I was working for, also for one of the dance or several dance conventions. These are like big dance conventions where students and teachers come from all over the country to attend, to compete for prizes and to do workshops and things like that. So I was working, you know, as an instructor slash choreographer, and this lady came up to me, and she said, oh, you're from California. I said, yeah, I'm from California. She said, oh, <laughs> and she kind of snickered. And I thought, snicker, what is she snickering about? And she said, because I own a big dance studio. I don't remember where it was now. Uh, or where it still could be. And she said that I had about two or three students who, who moved to California, I mean, two or three instruct, instructors, not students, two or three instructors who moved to California, you know, to try to make it big, to try to do something for themselves and further their careers. And she said, well, unfortunately, none of them made it, and they ended up back at my studio. And I have an open door policy. La di di da, she said. And at that time, I said, well, Willie, why is she saying this to me? Because I'm working. I'm working on the dance convention where I'm teaching her and her students. So why is she saying this to me? And I believe she said it to kind of see where I was and sort of it to be kind of discouraging and to say, ha, ha, ha. You think you're going to make it? You think you're going to do anything there? Well, I knew two or three people who came back crawling on their knees from California back home. I think that kind of was what she was saying. But here's one tip I want you to know. This is what I knew and thought about. What moved me is because I had already achieved some things. And I was focusing on my achievement and not focusing on failure, because failure wasn't an option to me. 